If I'm not mistaken, this is my first pumpkin spice latte. I gave it a five, but my heart says a four. I give it a four. Hi everyone, it's Kendo here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? I've been away for a few weeks and that was not intentional, but sometimes you just wake up and say, nah. And that's essentially what happened. Not today, chief. And then it turned into not this week, chief. And now it turned into <laughs> not two weeks, chief. A lot has happened. Not in like any, well, that's not true. I was gonna say not in any fundamental, like cool way, but it has. I'm gonna talk to you about the shenanigans of the last two weeks, because that's what it's been. Except the fact that my life is kind of like a like an early 2000s sitcom that will never be put on TV. I have no idea what color my skin is right now because <laughs> I haven't been going on walks because it's starting to get cold. So I, I guess this color works, this works. Let's get closer. Too close, you don't need to be that close. So you're probably racking your brain, staying up at night saying, I wonder what Kendall's up to. The last two weeks of my life has been somewhat of a saga, if you will. The first chapter of which we can discuss the misadventures of Philip the Rat. I was actually shocked. In my last video, I brought up my mouse problem, which come to find out was actually my rat problem. Um, and for some reason, so many people were invested in that story, especially if you can follow me on Twitter, because I was very, I was, I was up to dating. So I figured I'd just do everything in relation to that here. This is giving very story time vibes. This isn't a story time, <laughs> by the way. I don't really do story times anymore. Maybe I'll do a video on why I don't really do story times anymore. So early this month, while I was doing laundry, I noticed a little furry thing, furry black thing on the floor. So I thought I dropped a sock. But when I went to go investigate said sock, it started to scurry. And um, if y'all saw my last video, lo and behold, here we are, we still have no mouse and I'm just living on the edge. So that was like maybe the day after it happened or something like that. So I was on edge. That little was a sadist. He was only there to torture me. He was only there to be like the icing on the cake of all the things that could have gone wrong this year. So it started off with me just contacting the maintenance people, which by the way, I wanna move now. <laughs> Too late, I'm probably gonna be here another year, but I'm definitely looking. I was like, yo, I got a rat over here, what the hell? Their response was, and I guess it's not yours. <laughs> Bitch, does it look like I'm laughing? The f like I caught her in a panic and she's over here like, oh, well, okay, so we'll send someone over. The guy they send over is their on-site maintenance guy who's this like super tall white guy always wearing Bermuda shorts even though the weather does not call for that. He came in wearing Crocs and just kind of this overall deadpan, I don't really wanna be here type attitude, which is fine. I'd prefer you didn't have to be here either. Dude comes in, hey, you said you had a mouse. And I'm like, yes. The last I had seen him, he was running into my bedroom, which freaked me out, which meant I wasn't going into my bedroom. <laughs> the place that I risked my head. Guy comes in and he's like, do you take your garbage out? No, I let it accumulate. I also collect roadkill. Like, bitch, what? Of course I take my garbage out. He's like, yeah, this is essentially your fault. You're dirty and disgusting. And I'm like. And then he commences to put one singular traditional mouse trap on the floor leading into my bedroom. I was not um, comfortable with that. I asked him, are you gonna put, put more? He said, no. <laughs> One is plenty. So on my merry way to Home Depot, cause I'm buying some heavy duty. Y'all got me messed up. Over the course of the next 24 hours, I spent about 150 to $200 on things to catch and or repel this mouse. Somewhere around day two or three, I decided to give him a name cause I wanna know who my enemy is. His name is Philip. On this trip, I bought about 45 to $50 worth of plug-in repellents that did not work. So I bought other ones that are supposed to work for an entire house. Those were also another $50 or so. I bought an electric rat trap, heavy duty, took like C batteries. When is the last time you've done anything, needed anything that needed fat ass 
C batteries. And that was like another $30, $40, something like that. For about a day or so, I had figured that me and Philip had reached an impasse. He had left my home because I got all these expensive repeller things. But lo and behold, mid editing a video, I see him at my blind, just there squeak squeaking, cleaning his face, squeak squeak. He was emboldened. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna put the mousetrap in front of you so that you like just go into the mousetrap. But when I came back, he had left out of a little hole where my patio door meets my carpet. So that's where, that's how he got in here. Ring, 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 call up the maintenance guy. Hey, Crocs, I'm gonna call him Crocs. Hey Crocs, uh, I'm gonna need you to um, fill up this hole right here. Cause that's how the little bugger is getting in. He comes over. Actually, he freaks me out. Cause what happened was he came over my house and he didn't ring the doorbell at first. He just came to my door and did like this at my patio window. And so I see this like six foot four white dude in Crocs and shorts just being like, looking in my sh And so I screamed, hey, so you found the hole. He commences to fill two entry points that we think that Philip is getting through with rat poison. And I thought Philip had left out. So he was probably gonna eat this rat poison and die in the like lining of my house, which is gross, but you know, at least he's not in the house, whatever. I don't know if that would be better now that I think about it, but don't have to worry about that. Cause guess what? Philip was still alive. Around this time, I started to notice a pattern with Philip. Philip liked my kitchen. He particularly liked under my oven and on the side of my dishwasher. So once I noticed his pattern, I said, okay, I'm gonna put the electric rat trap right where I know he runs back and forth between my dishwasher and my oven, right? I even have this on camera. Philip. Oh, oh! What the f What the f What the f <laughs> Walked right through it. I immediately burst out of frustrated tears. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? That's it, I'm done. I'm gonna beat his ass with a broom. I'm perched broom in hand i just want to talk i just want to talk just want to have a few words have a conversation he comes out of my dishwasher and i hit him one good time with the broom now people were saying kendall you should step on him and i, I didn't want to do that as much as i hate the little bugger um i didn't want it to die like really inhumanely hence why i never use glue trap so a lot of people were saying just use a glue trap Mm, I didn't want to do that. Prefer to avoid super grotesque and torturous ways of killing the thing. Up until this point, I had been trying to just get it out with the repellent. Oh, I forgot about that too. At one point I sprayed my entire house with vinegar. That didn't get his ass out either. So we just, we, he got to die. But anyway, I hit him with a broom. Eh, eh, eh. Well, he got oh, he got Where did it go? Not in the broom. He's not. I hit him with a broom and he dematerialized from under the broom. You know like when you watch like horror movies and like Jason's there and then he's not? That is what it was. I felt like I was going insane. I was starting to feel like he don't even exist. Like this is just all of the stress of my year culminating into one figure just running my life ragged. So what did I do? I went and bought another trap. This time I bought another one of these like fancy, you don't have to see them traps. I also bought some old fashioned traps. Why I'm just now buying old fashioned traps? I don't know, but I'm also not gonna use them either because I watch him go up to my high tech, no mess, no see mouse trap, sniff it and walk around it. Like I felt like I was going insane. At some point I wasn't even scared anymore. I was just irritated. He'd be just like click clacking, playing with shit like this. And then if I walked into the kitchen, he would stop. So it got to the point that I would go into my kitchen and just like yell at him. <laughs> it's like, I know you in here. One day I'm gonna get you little Nick. It was that, it was warfare. After that, I said, no more. We're bringing out the big guns. I spent $250 on an exterminator. He came in, he put four bags of poison and left. I spent $250 on a dude to just put rat poison in a bag. And lo and behold, I started hearing the little 
play with the bags or even chewing through the bags and he was not dying. At some point I started to wonder, did he think we were friends? We just cohabitate, we roommates now. And I was starting to get so defeated. Like I kind of was like, damn, I should just adopt him at this point. <laughs> he already got a name and the way that he has lived through all of my attempts to kill him. But if you notice, there was still one thing I had not tried yet, and that was my own old fashioned traps. They were like $3 <laughs> and I took four of them bitches, put them in my kitchen with some peanut butter. And I said, I'm just gonna live my life. If it catches them, it catches them. Well, I, at this point, I wanna move. At some point I kept calling my management. I was like, yo, they're still here. Last time I called, he didn't even come. <laughs> he just stopped coming. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna have to move. No. So yeah, I laid out my traps. I sit in front of my TV. I start eating granola and it was like a movie. It was like slow motion. I heard to my right, a nice solid stiff. And I kind of turned to the side super slow and, and I could just kind of like hear Sarah McLaughlin playing. <laughs> in the arms of the angels. And there was Philip. I had gotten Philip. And my knee jerk reaction was like, an overwhelming rush of sadness. <laughs> Melancholy. I just felt so bad. But then I realized that's just Stockholm Syndrome. He just put me through hell, so I thought it was love. I'm about to cry right now, but I'm PMSing, so. Nothing I do or say should be taken seriously at this point. And I was like, so hurt. <laughs> I'm so hurt. You put up a good fight, little buddy. I was also triggered because all of my, because I was live tweeting this, because I don't know how to keep certain things to myself. <laughs> So there was a whole like subsect of people that followed me on Twitter that were emotionally invested in him. They thought of him as like the underdog. So we did like a little send off on live where I sweeped him into the dustpan and threw him in the garbage. Well, I was singing Sarah McLaughlin. What rat you know getting killed and they singing Sarah McLaughlin for his passing? Throw him in the garbage. So there you go. I spent, who knows, three, $400 to catch a singular mouse, cause there's been, cause everybody was so concerned about there being more of them. They were like, Kendall, are you sure there aren't more of them? There usually are. Girl, <laughs> I will move. Like I will pack my shit up today. Well, no, I can't. I will pack my shit up very soon <laughs> if I see another damn mouse. But yes, we sent him off to see proverbially, of course, cause he went in a dumpster. So there you go. People that wanted the update with Philip, he did. I feel like Philip was quite the microcosm of everything going wrong this year. But yeah, after that was over, I was like, I just, girl, I need to get away. <laughs> Which brings up one of the reasons why I was away last week. Me and my friends went on a road trip. What happened was my best friend, she ended up breaking up with her fiance. Don't be sad, it's amazing. It's, it's well overdue, it was, thank God. They broke up and now she needed to go to New York to get her stuff out of storage. And she was like, hey, I need help with this stuff. Also, we all need to get away. <laughs> Let's go. And so I was like, bitch, yes, get me out of my house. Whatever you want, I will quarantine. 12 hour drive because we can't go through Canada. Take it from Michigan to Long Island. So much fun. I had not seen my best friends for a reason other than my mom's funeral since quarantine, like since everything popped off. And it was just like, wow, I miss this. Oh my God. All the emotions, every emotion. We laughed so hard that your stomach hurts and your throat hurts. Oh, know about this, bro. got this. No. The core, bitch. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Use bruh. the bench, bro. Yes, <laughs> bitch. I can't compromise the film, bro. You gotta believe in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh. Wait, we're doing oh my God. Bro, that looks sus, bro. <laughs> we cried them ugly tears, got drunk, ate too much, laughed, cried, danced, in that order, by the way. But it was just so nice. Oh my God, I missed them so much. We also were like, hey, this is a thing we should do every year. Like, this was very feasible. Most of the time we spent was just in the hotel. <laughs> we didn't really go anywhere. We were driving and in the hotel, but it was just so nice. Cause there, I mean, there's nothing you can really do quarantine wise, but like to just not be home. 
to be in a different room instead of the room I'm always in and also with people I love and people who love me and people I can just bitch to and can bitch with me and it's just so nice. I forgot how healing that is. That's the thing I would definitely say because all of us went in there with different things that we needed to heal from and come to terms with. We're able to lament those things with people that care about our lamenting. And bitch, it's just nice to get a hug, bro. This quarantine really got me realizing that how much physical touch is actually a big love language of mine. Like I miss hugs, bro. It felt very much so like a, like a Netflix quarter life crisis show. It was so nice. Cause again, there were so many moments that were like oddly cinematic. My friend was living on Port Jefferson and she hated it. She hated every moment of it. And it was great that once she got her stuff, we took a ferry from Port Jefferson and on there we just watched as all that BS disappeared into the distance. It was so nice for all of us, you know, Hers was more locationally significant because she once lived there. But for me, it was more so like all the foolishness of this last year, just in general. Goodbye. I'm already out of this year. I'm done. It's October. Is it? Yes, it's October. I'm already mentally checked out. <laughs> I'm already going for next year. I can't do this. So as awful as this year has been, and it has been, it doesn't feel like it's been a waste. It doesn't feel like it's been for nothing. And it was quite the way to cap off uh, surviving. That was also a conversation that me and the friend who had ended her, ended the relationship. She was like, I now know I, I'm i gonna be okay, no matter what happens. And I was like, oh my God, right? Very, very sisterhood of the traveling pants. It was such a situation. Netflix, run us a show. We'd be very interesting. With that said, the only like awful part of the, <laughs> truly awful part of the trip was, um, how do I put this? We ended up in a lot of situations or a lot of locations, I should say, where people don't believe in COVID. And that for some reason, um, masks or the wearing of masks are a political statement. Wow. Okay, none, none quite as severe <laughs> as when we had to stop in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvanians outside of like major cities. Y'all can keep that, no. <laughs> Y'all are wild. We ended up having to stay like a truck stop area of Pennsylvania. In this area, people was looking at us crazy because we were wearing masks. I'm black, one of my friends is Chinese American and the third friend is white, okay? Immediately feel the um, of color tension. <laughs> I'm in the back seat, which is advantageous for me. As a black, I knew that I needed to get my ass under a cover if we get held off by the popo. Very openly conservative, um, why are you wearing a mask type area. But we ended up having to stay a night in Du Bois, Pennsylvania. Don't recommend it. And we park outside of the hotel and it's like, no one's wearing a mask, not a single person. And they're all like this close to each other talking. Jamie says, okay, y'all stay out here, turn the lights off, don't let anybody see you, I'm gonna go in first. That's how to be a white advocate. While she's inside, scoping the place out. Me and Iris are outside and Iris is like, what if they kill us? We're on the side of the road. They could just drive our bodies away. And I laughed and told her, we're a Chinese and a black. No one would be looking for our bodies. If they caught us, they caught us. This just, <laughs> just is what it is. Jamie comes back and she's like, okay, look, we're gonna wait. We're gonna sit here and wait. No one's wearing a mask, which unfortunately tells me a lot of your political leaning. You lib. <laughs> You gotta stop listening to the mainstream media. We see two people leave who are at the front desk. So we're like, okay, we've already checked in. So we like power walk it to that elevator. We power wash every touchable surface <laughs> because these people don't wear masks. So they probably don't clean effectively either. So we scrub that bitch now. I don't know, anybody I've ever met who spent an extended period of time in suburban Pennsylvania always come back saying, I don't ever wanna go back to suburban Pennsylvania. Shout outs to people that live in small towns in general. Your lives suck. I know you hate it. You must, cause you watch me and you live in a small town, which means that <clears throat> you're probably over the small town. Yeah, isn't that wild? There's a whole demographic of people who think that wearing a mask for some reason is a political statement. If your stupidity only affected you, that'd be one thing. I'd let them 
Go, go off, sis. Take no precautions. Do nothing. We ate a lot of bomb food. I'm not gonna lie though, I was looking forward to my own cooking again. Which, I could cry just talking about it. Because I'm a cook now. That's what I do. That's who I am. That's a hobby of mine. I enjoy it. I never thought we'd be here. For those of you that uh, follow me for Twitter, for Twitter, on Twitter, I've talked about a few months ago how I went on like a month long thing where I didn't order out from delivery places. And instead, if I wanted to eat out, I had to go get it, which meant I didn't eat out very much because I'm like, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> I'm just not gonna go, I'm not gonna do it. Um, but over the course of the last, what, two months, I've really been enjoying cooking. It's become such a like, a stress relieving experience, if that makes sense. And while we were away, you know, naturally we're eating out a lot, we're ordering food, but like I missed my food. I really did because at some point, <laughs> I remember distinctly, I, I told my friend, I was like, this is fun. I'm gonna need a salad because the way my digestion working, like, <laughs> bitch, I need some greens. <laughs> so when I finally got home, groceries delivered and I've been cooking, I ate an entire head of cauliflower in about a 24 hour period. So I'm waiting to deliver that food, baby. I'm gonna sound so silly saying this. You're gonna, you're gonna be like, Kendall, it's not that deep, it's just cooking. Cooking has always been one of various things in my life in which has always felt very daunting, so I just don't do it. I've talked about this many times, but I am quite the perfectionist. And the thing about perfectionism, it doesn't mean you're particularly good at anything. <laughs> That's what I've learned. It's like, you're not necessarily good at things just because you're a perfectionist. That means you strive for perfection, which sounds good in a capitalist society. However, if I'm not immediately great at something, it's not worth doing, or I, it's not worth learning how to do. That's kind of how my mind works. Because if I try to learn how to do it, it, it just it just confirms that I am indeed not perfect at everything, which is just blasphemy. I don't want to hear that foolishness. So cooking was one of those things, one of those things that I just objectively thought I'm not good at. And I don't like my food. Like my food is gross. So if it's not gross, it's like, I would never prefer this over eating out. It was that type of situation. So now I'm two months into this like, oh, I've started cooking thing. And it's like, I don't want your food. I did consider getting fast food, but like everything looked gross to me. <laughs> everything looked nasty. Like everything looks like a, like a faded khaki. <laughs> just looks gross a little bit. I can make something better, which is a thought that I've never had. It just feels so empowering. Cause that leads me to believe like Kendall, just because you're not good at something, you could be good at something later because you are learning a skill. But it's just so empowering. It's like, what are other things that I've been putting off because I thought I wouldn't be good at it? Running, still don't wanna do it. All right, so that's all for today, folks. I hope you guys had a fun time chilling with me. Like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KDJD. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.